These days, Netflix is kind of a sinking ship. Their subscription prices are said to be going up. They're hoping to shut down the idea of multiple accounts on one subscription. Their business model is taking heavy losses and their solution is to dissolve many great animation projects as well as vanity projects like The Irishman. You know, piece of crap movies that win awards apparently. Netflix's only silver lining these days seems to be for the incredibly rare animation revival. Let's see how long that one lasts. Stranger Things, despite ruining the impact of the show by keeping it with the binge lifestyle and the occasional huge hits like Queen's Gambit, The Crown or Tiger King. That being said, there is one other project I'm quite fond of from the Netflix original library and that is Love, Death and Robots. The pitch is just really interesting. An anthology series tying together the theme of love, death or robots, sometimes all three, sometimes not. Each episode disconnected from the other and handled in entirely different genres, animation studios and runtimes. It's basically a collection of shorts, and it had me hooked when it first came out. As such, we'll be covering three episodes, one from each volume. When the Yogurt Took Over, Pop Squad and Night of the Mini Dead. I didn't even realize the third volume was so recent, but let's get into it. Covering all three at the same time. When the Yogurt Took Over is the comedy tale of a super sentient bowl of yogurt, Pop Squad is the ethical confrontation of killing children in a society where everyone is immortal, and Nine of the Mini Dead is... Well, I think that one sort of explains itself. But the art styles are each incredibly different from one another. Cartoony, realism, and then just artsy. This effect for Night of the Mini Dead here is a real camera technique you can create. It's called tilt shifting, which is essentially realigning the lens inside of a camera to make it focus different parts of your frame. And doing so like this can make any real imagery feel like just a miniature set. Perfect for downplaying the end of the world. So Yoga begins with us reach right out to see all of Earth and a narrator speaking from the aftertimes of the yogurt, explaining how it all went down. And for the majority of this short, minimal dialogue is given. We move into shots that become progressively closer and closer up as we witness the dull greys of this civilization. Designed interestingly, until we zoom to the microscopic level. The birth of intelligent yogurt as it's fused. The shots oftentimes head on or 90 degrees to the side like some kind of Wes Anderson piece. The camera is happy to tilt upwards and downwards or dolly forward and back, but everything is so perfectly angular. Even the rare diagonal shot is a perfect 45 degrees. It's boring easy to manipulate as this population is. How did we ever get to the point where we were in fact ruled by a dairy product? They can't even walk the streets without ripping off the Incredibles, see? So when a yogurt begins to pop out full sentences, it's refreshing. Moving over to Pop Squad and the intro's a little different. Now we begin looking up in a sci-fi realism world, staring up at the green rainy sky down in the slums. Police lights illuminating red as we're in bad territory. Much more mature in tone. And it is. A lot of this short I'm sniffing out for YouTube reasons. Now our protagonist is a little less liquid, scoped in darkness as a silhouette until we see his seriously grim face. This guy's villainous. And as we see him enter this low class home, there's a mum begging hysterically. We're just trying to live. <laughs> They're just children. The dialogue is weird, saying these kids have never seen the outdoors. They call them it and thing and the parents are labeled breeders and after some rough policing the man without me showing in footage form pulls out a gun and shoots the kids in their apartment no more dinosaur and then there's nine of the mini dead with just a simple fade up on its setting a dark cemetery remaining completely static and faithful to this aesthetic as a single car comes bombarding onto the grounds this isn't played in real time it's sped up you know how zombie stories go plus it minimizes the impact of each moment an interesting choice but still a valid one very different from Pop Squad. The two protagonists then proceed to continue to shoot down my video in the eyes of YouTube before we're given this imagery. In its over-the-top manner, the sacred grounds have cursed the realm with literal antichrist visuals and now arise of zombies. Gotta love the small addition of the girl throwing her phone unsuccessfully at a zombie. <laughs> and there go our protagonists, now just another to the crowd. As the yogurt short gets to the core of its tale, they are at first rejected. What a bonkers premise, claiming to have solutions for the US government. But with the threat of switching sides... That's fine. We will just go to China. They're eventually granted claim to all of Ohio for a hundred years. 
And now, for the first time, we see a more vibrant shot from the perspective of a tourist entering Ohio via car. Still pretty simply tilting up to the sign, but gives off the size and power the yogurt has now ascertained. It's the only one like this. Now the yogurt has a giant factory, the narrator still rambling on. The only other sounds being the various room ambience that's been lingering with each new shot location. And now it gets uncomfortable as we move closer to its giant eye. The scientist now a blip in scale to it, and certainly not shot very flatteringly. The yogurt looks down on them now. There, it kept evolving. And I love the delivery of the word there, there. Switching over to Pop Squad and our antagonistic protagonist has a life and it's up in the skies. In this world, it's hell down below and heaven up top. The lower class and the higher, represented no more overtly than with opera singing, introducing us to the second world. As we see our second MC mid-performance in all red, before the signal of danger and here the signal of wealth if the lighting, music, and literal sparkles in the air needed any more tells. And as the two intermingle, we can piece together the logic of this world. These days, anyone can live forever, but in doing so, this society has decided that having children is illegal. Or as our guy puts it, Can't keep letting people into this party. Never that opera performance was 20 years in the making, and your average person's lifespan is now in the triple digits. But as she returns to her life of wealth and immortality, there's blood on his hands, like flakes that won't leave. And with flashes of police lights and those kids again, our antagonist is getting regrets. Only to culminate with... A Slayer of Dinosaurs! A direct reminder, it's PTSD internal conflict time. Cut to the boost session. This is the substance that grants eternal youth, Reju, and it's all angelic white. Not like yogurt, but like heaven. And as the subject is IV'd in, her face youthens, pores vanishing, eyes diluting in true, rich ecstasy. As our officer relives those moments below again, now witnessing the dad. <laughs> before seeing them gunned down by police, another scar of regret he cannot forget. I'm telling you man, completely different moods between each of these shorts. BAM! Los Angeles is taken over, joggers are doomed, cars are speeding, and as the emergency services is used, it only becomes a catalyst as the hospital becomes a hotspot, and suddenly it's so many people. The benefit to having such little impact on this action is to be able to witness the events in a new light as a fluid motion of a crowd rather than individual scuffles. It's oddly unique. We see the classic tale of a suburban family fleeing and successfully. We will never see them again, but we have as much emotive investment in them as all the repeats we've seen over the years. We scale up now. The transitions may remain the same as just a simple swipe, but the escalation continues. Now Franz is involved with a desperate car in flames, narrowly avoiding death for a few moments. A train derailing. I'll always see it as a train to Busan nod, but probably not. Thailand isn't safe. Truly, this is becoming a a global disaster, though also a fun little spin as the car, well, spins rather than just getting taken down. Screw it, this is cartoon logic now. We got room for gags. Canada has ice hockey. Look at that slipping motion. Also a handful of approaching zombies barely visible in the edges of the frame. Nice. The temples of martial artists getting a full on cut and a change in soundtrack as they're different from the norm. Maybe some do survive, whilst other locations have progressively less odds, only to cut to the President of the United States, escalating only further by bombing their own cities. But we'll return to that in a bit. Time to wind things down, as every short has had their premise, their meaty middle, and a variety of techniques to showcase their different attributes. So, as yogurt comes to a close, they provide the President, a bit different from the one we just saw, a plan to resolve the national debt. Now presented with reverse over-the-shoulder shots of each of them, as the Prez has to now come to an intimate decision. Which of course they do not follow. Politicians, eh? And a cut to black for that betrayal reveal. So it's an economic monsoon, now shown with a kind of match cut. Here's the ruins of the US streets. You see all the elements at play here. And here's Peace in Ohio, matching element movements and setups. How artistic. Reminds me of those render competitions Ponisher on YouTube does. If you're not familiar with that, check it out. It's quite a rabbit hole of content to consume. I love it personally. It's my only reference for this bit. Now the yogurt has achieved full power, getting human servicemen in all white as the president is shown now in 
disarray in the reflection of the bowl of yogurt. Not only are they dumber than the yogurt, they are dependent on them now and given full executive control. The signature flared away, kind of like Guy Fawkes after being tortured in British history. Related? Probably not. And as the world protests, they're soon shut down. The yogurt is all encompassing. And for our epilogue, the world has become non-confrontational. The narrator tells that No one argues with the yogurt. No one tweaks its formulas. And as society is rebuilt in the perfect yogurt image, they fly away. Yogurt pots achieving interplanetary travel, leaving the humans behind who are now so dependent on them, they're sad to see them go. What happens if it goes and leaves us behind forever? A tragedy from both ends of the narrative. God, can't wait to see how this doom and gloom plot goes next. In trailing that dinosaur toy, which he happens to see in the rearview mirror with a funky focus pool, our protag reaches Ipswich Collectibles. Fun fact, this place appears in another short at least in Love, Death and Robots, until he's on the trail of another illegal. After all, toys are just for collectors now. There are no children. That one doll has a crack across her face. Grim symbolism. And spotting a suspicious customer while he's there. So naturally, he follows. Having all these regrets and contemplations in life, he breaches her decrepit home draped in greenery from a forgotten era of mortality on the ground. His hunch is right, spotting a child, a frame within a frame, captured in her own metaphorical cage. But upon approach, he's not here to kill, asking instead the philosophical questions of this short. Knowing that they will be caught, why have children in this world? Because I'm not so in love with myself that I just want to live forever and ever. It's a question we won't get to ponder with immortality, but for her, having finite moments is what gives the meaning and a refreshing change to the norm that she has had to witness after 218 years of life. Mid-conversation, she's even breastfeeding the child, something taboo even today. YouTube's given me a filled day with these editing hoop jumping I have to work around. Uh, her name is Melanie. And correcting our guy's use of the word it, putting a name to a face, making it all the harder to kill her. And as he comforts Melanie, the mum runs for the gun, losing before yelling to sacrifice herself instead, not her baby. And he leaves in a hurry, hat left behind. He's mentally coming around, only to find Pentel, the other officer, his partner in crime. Aware of his dilemma and upon hearing Melanie was spared, is here in the name of the law, to which, though I can't show it, they shoot each other down. Pentel is dead, and Officer Briggs, oh that's his name, finally feels something. He's marked for death now, and if there's anything he's learned, it's that the finite experience has all the wealth. So he stands beneath the rain and looks up from the bottom, living in the moment more than he ever has before. His eyes, like hers, in ecstasy before passing on. The shot framing, same as the start, but more optimistic, beautiful. Another tragedy, yet a happy ending. Wow. And with that serious finale, time for Night of the Mini Dead to bring it on home. Prez has us launching bombs, turning civilians into survivors Mad Max style. It's just full on fantasy now, more so than before. We got giant flamethrower cars, we got tram gun carts. Trams don't exist in the real world, of course. Fires at a gas station, that's not a smart idea. But I like the additional shell sign with just an S out of place. Until we really edge things up with... Mutant zombies, but you don't see this in your zombie shows. Now some are giant, breathing fire, and it's just uninhabitable in cities. Until the president finally decides, screw it, that orchestral music is right. It's nuclear catastrophe. Every other country follows suit. The camera, in keeping faithful, pulls further and further back to maintain scale, reaching a galactic point before the impact can be minimalized with... A literal fart joke ending, keeping it classy. They were just a piece of dust in the landscape of it all, after all. And that is just the surface of what Love, Death and Robots has to offer. Each of the shorts have all sorts of varieties to spice up this anthology. I mean, one I shockingly haven't mentioned yet is how most of LD and R's episodes are based on source material, written shorts from all sorts of formats. Not to mention the show itself is inspired as a remake of Heavy Metal, also an anthology from the 80s that is just so incredibly 80s. But anyway, Yogurt comes from a short in John Scalzi's Misses from Possible Futures number one, 
Alternative History, what a book title, whereby most of the script is actually the same, except the yogurt talks a lot more directly with humans and tiny details like mentioning the exact province of China that they were offered instead of Ohio. This short came to a runtime of six minutes and was animated by Blow Studio from Spain and directed by Victor Maldonado and Alfred Torres. Whereas Pop Squad has an entirely different source, being Paolo Bacicalupi from within Pump 6 and other stories, Brand New Worlds. What are these titles, man? This is a lot more prose and a lot more in-depth, but interestingly has a slightly different ending, as Briggs isn't shot to death here or even confronted at all. He just goes on, wishing Melanie luck. Maybe the kid will make it to 18, get some black market reju and live to be 150. I run for my cruiser, splashing through mud and vines and wet, and for the first time in a long time, the rain feels new. I thought that was interesting. This was animated in the US by Blur Studio and is one of the longest at 18 minutes long. Directed as well by Jennifer Yan Nelson. And then finally, Night of the Mini Dead has no source. It's an original for Love, Death and Robots, or at least was just built for the screen. Originating from Jeff Fowler and Tim Miller. This guy being the creator of LD&R. Produced by Buck again in the US and somehow not being our shortest of the bunch. These three shorts come with them all sorts of diversity from who directs, who writes, who animates and from where, and its tone. To think it was all threaded together by a single theme of love, death or robots. Robot? Why didn't I pick a robot short? Oh, I'm an idiot! But with that, I'll finally end things off here. I'll keep a guilty pleasure eye on this series if it continues on. I love me a bit of thematic arty farty stuff. Let's just see if Netflix can stay afloat by the next time we cover something like this. What do I know? Maybe it's a long doomed sinking ship. My name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit.